Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8A garden and we are in the side garden and today we're going to do a simple inexpensive transformation of this portion of the bed. I think you're going to be really surprised at the before and after. Okay, so we are in the um, side garden of the house. This area faces west, um, or kind of, yeah, mostly west. And the main feature of the garden is this Ruby Falls Weeping Redbud. And we're gonna be doing a trim up of this guy. He is very happy. <laughs> he's doing beautifully, but he's covering up a lot that's going on underneath him. And so we're gonna be giving him a trim back to give him more of an umbrella shape. In addition, I have two shrubs right here, and these shrubs are uh, bright, double bridal wreaths by Rhea. They are beautiful when they're blooming. I'll put up some pictures of them. They bloom for a very short amount of time in the spring, and then after that, they're kind of these nondescript uh, green shrubs. So every year I give them a really nice trim back because if I let these guys go, they will be 12 feet tall in a heartbeat. So we're gonna do a trim back on the spirea. And then once everything underneath it's revealed, I'll talk to you about the next part of the transformation. Okay, so this is an ornamental tree, the Ruby Falls Weeping Redbud. It um, is about full grown, six to eight feet is about its max. It's been this height for quite a while at this point. It's been here three years. I'll show a, an original picture of it so you can see how much it's grown. And I love it. And you can allow it to continue this weeping kind of look. However, I really like when it has more of an umbrella shape. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just gonna be going in with some of my clippers and I'm going to be looking for some main branches and I'm going to be removing those main branches so it can see about what's going on underneath here. So let's remove a few to get started. It's kind of hard to get up in here but we'll just go ahead and cut off a couple just to kind of see where we're at on this. And I'm not looking to be like super drastic. I'm really just looking to take back that um, umbrella form that I love so much. Now, theoretically, I would have done this more in the um, spring, but y'all know life. I actually don't really suggest doing like major tree pruning during the summer, but here we are. <laughs> Better late than never. And it was really kind of just looked like it was mainly some of these front branches, the ones at the back. And some of these are smaller. I'm gonna grab my hand pruners. Okay, I've got a smaller set of pruners here. Okay, and just do a little bit of cleanup. Some of these smaller branches. You can see I'm not taking off a whole lot. Okay, there we go. There's that umbrella shape that I really love. And that's it. I mean, it looks like a whole lot. It really wasn't actually that much. You can see there is some grass, but a lot of this dead part is actually violas. <laughs> old violas but you see it revealed i have a couple of cone flowers over there i think it looks really nice i really like being able to see the trunk and it adds a lot of depth to the garden so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to trim back these double bridal respirea i'm going to be using an electric trimmer to do that and it's gonna be a pretty significant cutback. I know you guys are probably gonna be a little shocked, but it's how I keep these in control. So let's go ahead and get that knocked out. 
Okay, so basically when I'm starting a shrub, I like to cut across the top to kind of start, like this is the height I want to aim at because I want it to be the same on both sides. So I think I'm going to do it right about my hip right here, and then I'll do that same technique on the other side. Okay, so that's my topmost point right there. And then once I've done that point, I like to come from below in a soft rounded shape. Now I know this is gonna look like a super intense cutback, and it is. Um, but this guy can handle it. He's been here for several years and he really does need a good cutback so that he does not outgrow his space. So I just go a little bit of a swipe at a time. Okay, and then after I've got the bigger parts off, then I can just go back and I can refine. All right, and then I just like to run my hands through this. Pull out the dead pieces. And then I'll step back and evaluate it and make sure it's the shape I want. But let's go ahead and go to the next one. Okay, just a reminder, we're using the hip point. So this is sitting on my hip to start the top. And then I know how tall I can go and keep them a little more consistent. It won't be perfect, but it's a good measurement. <laughs> So I've got that going. So now we'll start from the bottom again. Okay, all nice and cleaned up. Aren't y'all shocked at how big that space is? So, so far in our transformation, we haven't spent any money yet. It's amazing what just a nice cleanup of shrubs, a little trimming on a tree, how much it will transform an area. So the next thing I'm gonna do is not fun, but I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna start digging out all that grass and old violas but we'll put this on a time lapse and go quick on that.
Okay, got that all cleaned up. We definitely have weeds across the back and I actually already weeded back there once this season, so they weren't too bad, but I had meant to put mulch back there in order to suppress some of those weeds. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that taken care of. And then I do wanna come over here. I might do this actually next. I wanna come over here and cut back these balloon flowers. So balloon flowers are a perennial in my area. I love them, I think they're so fun. However, you can see like how flat they are. It's because this shrub came out so far that they were having to reach out from underneath it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them a little trim back and see if we can't get another flush of blooms out of them. It's about time for me to be cutting back a bunch of my perennials anyway. And as you can see, they bloom profusely already. That's what all the brown dried areas are. So a nice uh, cutback would be really good to reinvigorate them. So let's do that first and then we'll lay the mulch. that little area a little cleanup that looks better and uh, I really like this container right here I didn't record when I planted it it's purslane at the bottom and then a black eyed susan vine on top I love it it looks really good okay let's get that mulch spread Okay, so we are on day two now. My dogs both had dental surgery yesterday, and Buffy, y'all know the one who's out here with me all the time usually, she had a really hard time. She's older, and so she had to have some extractions, and then she also had a little cyst removed, and she was just, she was struggling. So I'll, instead of coming out here and finish the project, I just hung out by right beside my Buffy girl. Um, for the rest of the day and through the night, but she is so much better this morning and she's doing good And so Donald my youngest is sitting with her and so we're gonna knock out the rest of this project So let's talk about the plants. So we're gonna be adding in front of the tree Okay, if you remember the goal is we are doing a transformation on a budget So yes, I spent money on the mulch Although I've had those two bags of mulch for months sitting there waiting to go back here and just haven't done it So a couple of bags of mulch so now we are going to be adding plants, but we're going to be adding the plants from my clearance haul from Lowe's, so a much more cost-effective approach. Now, I've got the two cone flowers here already, and I believe these are the Cheyenne Spirit ones. These next ones are not going to be a total match, um, but they'll be similar. So I have two that are orange tones. And here we go. <laughs> and they are sombrero salsa, um, sombrero salsa orange, and about 18 to 20 inches um, tall, 22 to 24 inches wide. And these are um, perennial in my area. Coneflowers are wonderful, love them. And basically these coneflowers and then the other flowers I'm about to talk to personally, and these are my goes go-to for the heat of the summer. These guys like the heat of the summer. They give you a big burst of color and they really put up with all of um, the heat. So then next on there, I've got three of the powwow white cone flowers, which is also from um, my clearance haul from Lowe's. And these are about 16 to 20 inches tall, 12 to, 12, 12 to 16 inches wide, and they are also perennial in our area. How's it going? Oh, <laughs> that's a good, <laughs> nice. It's <That's> awesome. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do is we've got a cluster of the cone flowers over there, and I'm going to add in one of the white 
right here in one of the powwow white. And then back off to the side, we're gonna add the two orange with another white one over here. And I think I'm still gonna go add another white one in this space. Okay, so we're gonna spread out the perennials, which would be great. In the meantime, we're gonna be filling in with purslane, which is an annual in this area. And it does really, really well for, um, basically until we freeze here and it's only about two to six inches tall but its spread is about eight to twelve inches and it's almost like a succulent it feels like um it might be a succulent it loves full sun and in the evening all of the flowers close up it's really cool and then first thing in the morning when the sun comes up all the flowers open up which i think is just so fun now i picked these up at tractor supply which is not typically the place i go for flowers but they were on sale so instead of being a dollar 99 per container they were a dollar 29 each and look at these plants isn't that gorgeous so can you imagine all of these cone flowers under planted with the purslane i think it's just going to look really great it's going to go a long way to create a lot of ground cover over here which is going to hold back on the weeds which would be really nice i think i'm going to spread out all the yellow and then tuck in some pink in some different places i think it'll look really really nice so i did for all my plants we did them all on um you know, on a budget. And so we did all of the clearance plants from uh, Lowe's and then we did the purse lane, which was on sale at Tractor Supply. So we're gonna kind of get these um, planted. I am currently out of plant tone and I have not taken my backside over to Home Depot to pick any up. So it is what it is. We're gonna plant directly in the ground. This soil is really great. It also had um, a lot of fresh mulch earlier in the spring. So I'm not gonna be adding new mulch to it either, but let's go ahead and get this knocked out. I did want to point out one thing. I have daffodils planted all along here. I'll put up a picture so y'all can see. A lot of people ask, well, what do you do when you run into a daffodil? Well, if I run into a daffodil bulb, if I accidentally dig it up, I just put it back in the hole. I mean, that's it. I don't stress about it. And I put the plant on top. Um, I'm not worried about that at all, but a lot of people worry about the bulbs. They're planted at about six inches deep. So the only way I should be, might be running into them is the larger cone flowers. All of these smaller purslane, I shouldn't be um, running in. These are only about three inches deep. So I should not be running into the daffodil bulbs. But like I said, if I happen to, I just stick them right back in the hole and we're good to go. It's really fun to see how this soil in this garden has matured over the years. It's about three years old now. This was my COVID project. And it's really fun to see how it's grown over time. <clears throat> now, every time I dig in it, I run into tons of worms, which is, I mean, that's, as a gardener, that's what you want to see. Okay, and once I have everything planted in the ground, do you want to water in very well? When you choose to plant something in the middle of the summer, you're going to really have to pay attention to it in the beginning. Make sure it's well watered. I have a lot of confidence in this purslane, though. I have purslane that reseeded itself just a little bit in a pot in the backyard, and I have not watered it once this year. So it is very drought tolerant. And I think the cone flowers will do well once they're established. But I will check this a couple of times a day in the beginning just to make sure that everything's looking okay and that the heat isn't too intense. Because since this is facing west, I mean, this is going to get, truthfully, in about 30 minutes, I'm racing the sun right now. Of course, it's coming out just as I said that. I'm um, racing the sun. About 30 minutes, this will have sun until about 9.30 at 9 o'clock. 9 to 
But after I water this, I want to show you guys a couple of things in the garden real quick and then we'll come back and we'll look at this finished product. Okay, I want to show you a couple of things over here in this garden. This is Red Riding Hood Phlox and it is, it's aging out, but I just want to show y'all how beautiful this is. This is its first year here with me. It is, or it's, yeah, yeah, that's it. Panicle Red Riding Hood Phlox and it's um, from Bluestone Perennials. Super happy with that. Really, really pretty. The asters, this is a bluebird aster over here blooming, which is doing really, really well. Then over here is the banana cream Shasta Daisy. Y'all know I don't like Shasta Daisies, but they got talked into this by one of the reps at the um, at Proven Winners. And I like it so far. It's pretty. It's not a typical daisy. I actually really like it when it first blooms and it has more of this like yellow tone to it. I think it's really pretty. And I like that it's kind of a doubled fringed look on its petals. I like it. I do think I plant these too close together, so that's not good. <laughs> I also have this, which is Retro Echinops. So it's like a really soft shade of blue. And this is a perennial that I got from Bluestone Perennials, and this is its first year, and it is pretty tall. And I'm kind of obsessed on about it. Um, oh, look over here. You see that? It's a hummingbird moth, not a true hummingbird, but a hummingbird moth. He is having a grand old time back in there. <laughs> okay, um, I really like the Echinops, and I would love it if I had a whole bunch of them tucked back in here. So I think that might be something that I might order from Bluestone Perennials this year. So these guys, and put like five of them back here. And they are extremely drought tolerant and their blooms last a really long time. And yes, I could harvest these seeds and grow them, but I'm not going to y'all. Let's just be honest. I'm not going to do that. I'd rather go ahead and order from Bluestone Perennials because I have found that the Echinops or um, thistles are really hard to um, get started. Now, I wanted to show you this cone flower over here. This is the Pow Wow, one of the Pow Wow series. I think it's just pink. I'm not sure. I'll put the name below. How about that, y'all? <laughs> Can y'all see why I'm obsessed with cone flowers at this time of the year? So pretty. And looks like my sweet almond verbena is starting to bloom out. So pretty and smells amazing. I need to do like a major like summer cut back on a bunch of stuff because everything is needs a good cut back because we are like yesterday the heat index was 111. These are double super, uh, paradisio super duper echinacea. So they bloom like a couple of flowers within like the you know like one row of petals and then a second flower up in the center. And they're super cool. I grew those from seed. And then Green Twister, that's coming along. Um, but I do want to show y'all my dahlias over here. This is the variety color spectacle that I leave here year after year. This is the first time it's bloomed in early summer. It usually doesn't bloom until October, y'all. So this is very different for me. I'm kind of excited. I didn't even stake them or anything because I'm just not used to them blooming so early. So yeah, that's kind of exciting. I'm going to harvest some of those and bring some of those in. All right, but let's go look at the final product. Okay, so I know for a lot of people, purslane is basically like a weed um, and not in a good way, not a good weed, <laughs> but a weed that you pull out of your driveways and pathways and people really dislike it. I love it. Um, I love it for its drought tolerant qualities and I love its bright bold colors and I love how well it's going to fill in the space. I mean look at those colors with the Cheyenne Spirit comb flowers. Just a beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. And then of course we have these comb flowers over here. I don't think I'll get much blooms from these comb flowers this year but that's okay. Um, they were a really good deal and they're perennials and so I'll enjoy having them come back year after year. But um, one thing I also love is all of these colors will work really well for the fall as well. So I will not redo this bed for the fall. Um, these purslane will last quite a while. All I'll do is tuck in some pumpkins and call it a day. All right, you all, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I did want to put out a reminder. I did break this up into a couple of videos. It is hot, hot, hot in our area, like scary hot. 
um, don't push yourself too hard. Um, you know, I'm out here all the time and even this heat is really hard on, um, on me and I'm kind of seasoned to it. So I do um, ask all of y'all to be careful and safe when you're out gardening at this time of the year. Um, break it up into multiple projects. You are not behind. Don't put that on yourself. Don't say, I got to get it done. I got to get it done. Your health is more important than getting it done in the garden. <laughs> so please keep that in mind. But I'm really happy with how this turned out. And this will be really fun. Everything's kind of flat right now because it's been watered in and it's kind of going through a little bit of shock and that kind of thing. So um, I'll probably come out here and get some video later this evening just to see if everybody's kind of plumped up a little bit. I think which will be really fun. All right, you all, as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up. And make sure you check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's Mad Gardener or Decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.